Conflict is breaking out in southwestern China. Chinese Muslims facing off against police officers in crowds throwing stones at authorities. Sparking the clash, Chinese authorities attempt to demolish the roof of a mosque. What do you think about the incident? Let us know below and subscribe if you haven't already. This program is brought to you by Preserve Gold, the number one precious metals IRA provider. Call 855-962-3322. Welcome to China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. Unrest in a majority Muslim town in southwestern China. On Saturday, clashes broke out between residents and police in Yunnan province following the forced demolition of a domed roof on a centuries-old mosque. Footage shows officers coated in body armor lined up outside the gate, barring the angry crowd from entering. Dozens of police vehicles stood by on the scene, prepared for potential arrests. The protest is believed to be related to a court decision in 2020, which outlawed some of the mosque's renovations. Following the incident, local police urged anyone involved in the conflict to surrender themselves before June 6 for a lighter penalty. In recent years, the Chinese Communist Party has further strengthened its control over religious groups like Muslims and Christians. And in the autonomous region of Xinjiang, home of the Turkish-language-speaking Uyghur Muslims, thousands of mosques and shrines have been destroyed. Millions of Uyghur Muslims are forced into mass detention and re-education camps as part of the CCP's campaign to assimilate all non-Han Chinese people. Two agents of the Chinese Communist Party, or CCP, are facing charges for a bribery scheme on U.S. soil. The Justice Department said the two tried to carry out China's aim of, quote, toppling the Falun Gong. Falun Gong is a spiritual practice based on the principles of truthfulness, compassion, and forbearance. The practice is banned in China and has faced a brutal persecution campaign driven by the CCP since 1999. The DOJ say John Chen and Ling Feng tried to bribe an undercover officer who they thought was an IRS agent, paying the officer 5000 in cash with a promise of more. That's if the official advanced a complaint with Internal Revenue Service to revoke federal tax exemptions for a Falun Gong entity. Stripping the entity's exempt status would increase its federal obligation. The department quoted a suspect as saying the bribes were intended to carry out China's aim of toppling the Falun Gong. Levi Browdy, executive director for the Falun Gong Information Center, spoke with Yanni Akelik, host of American Thought Leaders, on the Epoch Times to share his reaction. As it shows the lengths that CCP agents, people working on the behalf of CCP, would go to to try and silence, malign, or in their own words, as you just said, topple Falun Gong. I mean, think about what they did. They tried to bribe U.S. officials so that those officials would then take a U.S. agency and target people right here in America. According to the Falun Gong Information Center, Chen is a notorious party loyalist and an outspoken anti-Falun Gong community leader in Los Angeles. He's been known to have met with former CCP head Hu Jintao and current CCP head Xi Jinping. He also boasts close ties to the Chinese consulate in Los Angeles. Chen and Feng face multiple charges that could land them in jail for years, including acting as an unregistered foreign agent and bribing a public official. This comes a month after federal agents arrested two New York residents on suspicion of operating a Chinese secret police station above a noodle shop in Manhattan's Chinatown district. The DOJ says they will continue to disrupt the CCP's efforts to silence its critics in the U.S. China is stepping up its game in renewable energy. According to a report from the International Energy Agency, the world's investment in solar power is outpacing fossil fuels for the first time. That's with China leading the way. It mentioned that the world saw a rise in clean energy investment between 2021 and 2023. And over 90 percent of that increase came from advanced economies and China. In 2022, China invested over $545 billion in clean energy, including solar and wind power, electric vehicles, and batteries. That amount almost quadrupled the U.S. contribution, which totaled over $140 billion. 
China's solar sector started back in the 90s when Beijing began to provide tax incentives to lure foreign investors. As a result, many foreign nations, including the U.S., started outsourcing their production to China. The supply chain integration not only bolstered China's manufacturing capacity, it also drastically reduced the price of its solar panels. Now, the West is starting to feel those effects. One question for the Biden administration is how to push America's transition into clean energy without China-controlled solar panels. Domestic solar panel makers have been scrambling to compete with cheap products from China. The U.S. now gets over 80 percent of its solar panels from four southeastern countries, Vietnam, Thailand, Malaysia and Cambodia. China has been selling its solar panels through those countries to avoid U.S. tariffs. That's despite requests from U.S. solar panel makers demanding tariffs on those products to even the playing field. The White House decided to pause tariffs on solar panels from those Asian countries until June 2024, saying it would create a buffer to allow domestic makers to ramp up production and avoid delays in solar projects installations. The U.S.-China space race is heating up, Beijing looking to make new moves among the stars. The nation will launch a new spaceship on Tuesday, and the three astronauts aboard are set to carry out more complex tasks in outer space. This will mark the fifth manned mission to the Chinese space station since 2021. NASA Administrator Bill Nelson warned the U.S. to watch out for China's space ambition, adding that the upcoming two years is critical as it determines who could get the upper hand. Nelson noted if Beijing beats Washington, it could claim ownership of resources on the lunar surface. China also plans to send astronauts to the moon by 2030. As the only nation that successfully put astronauts on the moon, the U.S. is working toward another manned mission there by the end of 2025. Worth noting, Chinese space programs are heavily tied to the People's Liberation Army. The military connection has long drawn concerns from Washington. The regime is also barred from the International Space Station for that reason. A new development in the U.S.-China chip war. On Saturday, U.S. Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo said Washington won't tolerate China's ban on chips made by Micron Technology, the biggest U.S. memory chip producer. She called Beijing's move economic coercion and noted the U.S. is engaging with its partners on how to respond. The latest round of tech-related tensions began last Sunday. That's when China's cyberspace regulator warned the country's key infrastructure operators against buying Micron's chips, saying they pose a relatively serious risk. This follows a U.S. ban on exporting high-end chips and equipment to China in October. As Micron loses market share in China, South Korea, a major trade partner to China and a security partner to the U.S., is caught in the middle. Both Washington and Beijing have been lobbying their counterparts in Seoul. A new deal to shore up supply chains. The U.S. Commerce Department said Saturday that 14 nations have come to an agreement after a year of negotiating. All of them members of the U.S.-led Indo-Pacific Economic Framework. Speaking in Detroit, Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo called the pact the first of its kind. The measure directs the 14 nations to form a council tasked with coordinating supply chain activities. It also creates a crisis response network designed to send out early warnings to member nations about potential supply disruptions. Zooming in further, the agreement includes a new labor rights advisory board. It aims to raise labor standards in supply chains and will consist of government, worker and employer representatives. Worth noting, it doesn't include talks over tariff reductions or other market assets aspects of traditional free trade deals, but it does seek to outline common rules on agriculture, labor, environmental standards, and trade. U.S. farm and industry groups have complained that the deal lacks market access improvements, putting it at a disadvantage next to other trade deals in the region, including one led by China. That's as the White House works to provide Pacific countries with an alternative to China. Supply chains make up one of four pillars in the IPEF talks. The other three are trade, climate transition and labor and inclusiveness. Officials expect those issues to take longer to negotiate. And the U.S. is aiming for more results by the time of the APEC Leaders Summit in San Francisco in November.
A secret trip to Taiwan. Last Wednesday, Taiwan's military revealed that a NATO general visited the island back in March, shortly before Taiwanese President Tsai Ing-wen met with House Speaker Kevin McCarthy in the U.S. NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, is the biggest military alliance in the world. The general's visit took place at the National Defense University. NATO says that the trip was only for academic purposes. For decades, the Chinese Communist Party has seen the democratically governed island as its own territory. That's despite never having ruled it. And the regime has a history of opposing Taiwanese efforts to form ties with the West. NATO has long been aware of China's growing assertiveness in the Indo-Pacific. Just recently, the organization planned to open a liaison office in Japan that would mark its first in Asia. Beijing is taking a new step toward challenging Boeing and Airbus, China's first domestic homegrown commercial jet, completing its maiden flight on Sunday. But can the plane take off without parts from American companies? Let's zoom in on the details. China's homegrown passenger plane completed its first commercial flight on Sunday, marking a milestone in the country's effort to become more self-reliant. The narrow-body jet is 15 years in the making. The product of state-backed company COMAX aimed to compete with Airbus and Boeing. President Xi Jinping hailed the project as a triumph of Chinese innovation. The plane completed a two-hour flight from Shanghai to Beijing with China Eastern Airlines, with a return scheduled later in the day Sunday and longer flights on the horizon. A COMAC official recently said the company has won over 1,200 plane orders from at least 32 customers so far, the majority of which are reportedly based in China. Chinese media reported the plane maker expects annual production to reach 150 jets within five years. Although assembled in China, the plane relies heavily on components such as engines and avionics from Western firms. Neither European nor U.S. regulators have certified the aircraft yet. Until they do, key international markets will remain closed to the C919. China's C919 jet is designed to rival aircraft made by Boeing and Airbus, though both companies offer models that currently outperform China's new aircraft. But how many parts of the plane are actually made in China? The landing gear, APU, and electricity system come from U.S.-based Honeywell. The engine comes from a joint venture between GE Aviation and a French aerospace firm. The communication and navigation systems come from U.S.-based Rockwell Collins. The Chinese side was mostly responsible for the radar cover and wings. Tensions in the Korean Peninsula are spiking, Japan readying its ballistic missile defense, vowing to shoot down any projectile that would threaten its territory. That's after North Korea informed the country of an upcoming satellite launch. China calling for dialogue between the two sides. Here are the details. Japan put its ballistic missile defenses on alert on Monday and warned it would shoot down any projectile that threatened its territory after North Korea notified it of a satellite launch between Wednesday, May 31st and June 11th. North Korea says it has completed its first military spy satellite and leader Kim Jong-un has approved final preparations for the launch. Analysts say the satellite is part of a surveillance technology program which includes drones and is aimed at helping nuclear-armed North Korea to strike targets in the event of war. Japan's defense ministry said in a statement it would use its standard missile 3 or Patriot missile Pac-3 to destroy a North Korean missile. Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida told reporters such a launch would be a serious violation of UN Security Council resolutions condemning North Korea's nuclear and missile activity. South Korea also called on the North to scrap the planned launch. And China's foreign ministry called for dialogue to ease the escalating tensions. Reclusive North Korea has conducted a series of missile launches and weapons tests in recent months, including a new solid-fuel intercontinental ballistic missile. That's all for today's China in Focus on YouTube. We're now sharing a shortened version of our program here after being demonetized for two years. Here's what to look out for in our second half. Beijing eyeing a new embassy in London. The project is slated to become China's biggest embassy in Europe. We have the latest on the local council's decision. Plus, a sprawling Chinese battery factory in Hungary is facing backlash. Why does the Hungarian government want it? And why are local residents concerned? 
The full episode is available on our partner platform, AppBock TV. To sign up, click the link down below. Thanks for watching China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. See you tomorrow.